Hey guys, welcome to AVM Reviews. Today's topic is tetanus. So, first up, what is tetanus caused by? It is caused by Clostridium tetany, which is a gram positive anaerobic drum strip shaped bacteria. Like this. Notice the rounded ends which are basically spores giving the bacteria a drumstick like appearance. What is the reservoir of the bacteria? That is, where is the bacteria stored in nature? It is stored in soil. Next, what is the incubation period of tetanus? It is 6 to 10 days, but it can vary greatly from few days to several months. Next, what is the mode of transmission of tetanus? Tetanus is spread by contamination of wound. Next, remember that tetanus toxin is the second most lethal toxin in the world. Guess what? Which is the most lethal toxin in the world? It is botulinum toxin. Next, what is the lethal dose of tetanus? It is 0.1 mg. Next, what is the mechanism of action of the tetanus toxin? After we get an open wound or cut, the tetanus toxin enters our body from that wound. From the wound, the toxin enters the local neurons via which the toxin travels retrogradely until it finally reaches the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the toxin accumulates in the inhibitory interneurons and inhibits it. We will get back to this point a little while later. For now, the inhibition of the inhibitory inter interneurons leads to excitation of the autonomic and the motor neurons. The excitation of the autonomic nerves leads to blood pressure and heart rate alterations, while the excitation of the motor neurons leads to several mus severe muscle contractions all over the body. These muscle contractions are known by different names according to the muscles they affect. When the muscles contra contractions occur in the muscles of mastication, it is called trismus. Like this. It is also known as lockjaw, as the patient is unable to open his or her mouth. When the muscle contractions occur in the back muscles, it is called opistotonos. Like this. This is a portrait of a soldier dying of tetanus. When the muscle contractions occur in the muscles of facial expression, it is called rhesus sardonicus, like this. Next, for those of you who wish to know the exact mechanism how the tetanus toxin inhibits the inhibitory interneurons, I will go into a bit more detail. The line diagram on the left side is that of a normal human being while the line diagram on the right side belongs to a person with tetanus. So coming to the normal human being side, these are the neurons. This is the inhibitory interneuron. Under normal circumstances, the inhibitory interneuron blocks the transmission in the neuron. So the neurotransmitters are not released from the neuron, resulting in muscle relaxation. But in a patient with tetanus, the tetanus toxin blocks the inhibitory interneurons. So there is no inhibition of the neuron, resulting in chronic excitation of the muscle. Thus muscle contractions occur. Finally we come to the prevention of tetanus, that is the post exposure prophylaxis. Here we discuss what are the steps to be taken when we get an open wound. So we make a table. On one side are the wounds which are less than 6 hours old, clean and non-penetrating and have negligible tissue damage. On the other side are all the other types of wounds. So in a patient who has received complete course of tetroxide in the last 5 years, Nothing needs to be given in both the cases. In a patient 
who has received complete course of toxoid in the last 5 to 10 years a single dose of tetanus toxoid needs to be given in both the cases for those who have received more than 10 years ago a single dose of tt needs to be given in the first case and a single dose of tt plus human tetanus immunoglobulin needs to be given in the second case finally for those who have never received tetanus vaccine or whose vaccination status in uh, is unknown toxoid complete course needs to be given in the first case and toxoid complete course along with human tetanus immunoglobulin needs to be given in the second case finally what is the minimum antitoxin level needed to be present in our body to prevent tetanus it is 0.1 international units per ml lastly remember there is no herd immunity in tetanus that is immunization of one person does not prevent infection in another person thank you for watching this video